Hello everybody and welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be looking into artifacts primarily from the 17 and 1800s and some of the interesting phenomena associated with them. So let's get started. Now the one artifact I want to start with is going to be bear's grease and then we're going to move on to coins a bit later but this bear's grease it was more popular from the period of 1653 all the way until the first world war and i found other articles just mentioning how it fell out of popularity in the mid victorian period replaced in the 1860s so it had its run of being fairly popular and i find this particular artifact at a lot of different sites that i look at and one of those sites is in Melbourne Australia and they found this Russian bear grease at a site of a former hotel called the mistletoe hotel and at this site in the cellar largely they found a total of around 250,000 artifacts and this was just one of them but the thing that we should note about the mistletoe hotel i think it was demolished and replaced by a car park at one point but this hotel it sits in this area where you have all of these buried blocks the buried blocks of melbourne this phenomenon that was i guess it was discovered in 2017 and turns out that city council had ordered the street levels to be raised approximately six feet and everybody just forgot about it so this hotel with all these artifacts it had a cellar which actually turned out to be ground floor so i think this area was inundated during an event that we don't know about so i find the fact that there's this russian bear grease makes me think that this is actually older than we're being told uh, we're being told it's from the 1800s now if we leave melbourne and go to christchurch in new zealand which apparently is about a three and a half hour flight we can look at archaeological sites in christchurch and there was a new convention center that was built in christchurch but during the excavations they found again a lot of artifacts and they found more of this Russian bear grease. So in the case of Melbourne, we're told that the street levels were raised. And over here in Christchurch, New Zealand, they're still finding the same artifacts buried at about the same depths, but there's no mention of the street levels being raised here. But it's the same phenomena, uh, same artifacts. So I think it's the same event that is in our past, but exactly when did it happen i don't know so i think these artifacts are older than the 1800s in this case and we can even go to the united states and uh, there's a site called uh, quindaro it's in present day uh, kansas city in kansas and this town uh, it was established in i think the 1850s but it was actually rediscovered during an archaeological study in the late 1980s what used to be a thriving township in 1856, Quindaro only lasted six years and now sits in ruins. Archaeological teams have uncovered the ruins of 22 buildings. And there are some interesting images of the ruins of this former town, but once again, uh, they found more bear's grease associated with the site as well as other artifacts, but it's just an interesting aspect to a lot of these buried sites, these ruined sites, certain types of artifacts keep showing up. And they're dated largely to the 1800s in the case of the Spares Grease, but I think these sites might be older, which is really hard to sort of wrap your head around. But uh, this is just another image showing some of these ruins of this Quindaro site. Today, it is an archaeological site often referred to as ruins. And then we can go to Fort Vancouver in Washington State, not far from Portland, Oregon, actually. But largely, the Fort Vancouver is buried. And they found upwards of a million, I believe, artifacts, but definitely they found just a ton of artifacts and more of this bear's grease shows up and you can just see how deep some of these things are buried. And in some of these cases, for instance, this company, I believe they still exist. This company is from London, I believe, and then they're founded in 1600s, 1670s, I think, and then they moved to Sussex. So when you read their history, it's like a continuous history, but 
it seems like there's a break somewhere because this whole early 1700s, 1600s, like this early colonial period in other parts of the world, like the United States, they're finding all these buried sites as well. So like, for instance, I think it was 2008 or nine, scientists uncovered uh, the secrets uh, behind a lot of the rivers and streams and how all this silt accumulates along them. The scientists, their work showed that almost all streams and rivers in the eastern United States are actually victims of colonial era tampering that buried resilient and complex river ecosystems under yards of silt. So prior to this study, in 2008, nine, they determined that it actually it accumulated quickly and it was during this earlier colonial period. So they're putting it, you know, largely in the 1700s. And this was, like I said, more recent discovery. And it overturned all the science that had been in place for, you know, decades, 40, 50 years, whatever it was. So there's just something going on. And it's sort of hard to pin down exactly when this happened. But our history has been blended so perfectly that it's hard to recognize what actually happened. So yeah, so I just wanted to focus in on this bear's grease and its presence at a lot of these sites. So and that was the first thing I wanted to touch on. Now, speaking of things that are buried, I wanted to focus on these coins along the River Thames in London, the mudlarking, and people continuously find all sorts of artifacts. But one of the things that people find are these interesting coins, these crooked coins that were told were intentionally tossed into the river in some cases. And this phenomenon of bending these coins and throwing them into the river, I guess it reached its height during the reign of William III in the second half of the 17th century. It was fashion for a young man to give a crooked coin to the object of his affections. The suitor would bend the coin and then it, if the woman didn't like the person, she would throw it away in the river or something like that. So I, I've heard these called love tokens as well. Uh, crooked coins, love tokens, but these can be found not only, you know, along the Thames River, but also on many archaeological sites. These love tokens, the interesting thing to me about them is at their height, we're talking late 1600s, early 1700s. So the time period is interesting to me. And also the fact that they're bent and the fact that on a lot of these coins, they're almost unrecognizable. You can't see the faces on a lot of the coins. So we're being told that the people giving the coins to their uh, significant others would intentionally file down the face so you couldn't see it. And I guess I'm just wondering if there was an event that caused these coins to be bent and the face to become an unrecognizable. That's sort of the speculation I have. And this is just another example of some of these coins. These are post-medieval silver penny of Charles I, probably bent to form a love token dating to the 1600s. And just some more of these coins from a different organized dig in the UK. Again, just some more, but a lot of them, not only are they bent, but the face has been filed down and they can be found all throughout the UK. And this is just a person mentioning finding these coins over a two year period from different sites in Ireland. So I think maybe there was some, again, this unknown event that might have caused the phenomenon of the bending of the coins and the, the filing down of the faces, maybe. Because when I started looking into other coins from the 1700s again, you find these pickpocket coins from Russia. They're also known as thieves coins. And once again, the face is largely unrecognizable. They appear to be filed down and they're shaped oddly, but we're told that this was intentional. So pickpockets could use them to dig into your pocket and they would scoop up whatever was in there. But again, I'm interested because the time frame again, 1700 it seems to line up with these love token coins and in fact they're filed down as well or it appears so that is interesting to me because it's a commonality and yes yeah, some of these coins were found in moscow it's just really unusual phenomenon a lot of these older coins were sent back to the mint and then they were reproduced and you also find that in the uk as well the great recoinage of 1696 and 1816 so a lot of the older coins were taken back in by the government and new coins introduced. And I just 
thought I'd mention that, just another similarity. So speaking of coins, I want to hit on the coin trees because this is another interesting phenomenon that is in the UK primarily. And you have, I think there's over 30 sites where you have these older trees that people were told anyway, that people have put coins, hammered coins into these trees. And it's believed that the practice of inserting coins into trees began way back in the 1700s. So again, the timing is very interesting to me because ultimately you got a lot of older coins as well that are now bent and they're unrecognizable, filed down, and they're dating to the 1700s. So I just wanted to mention this phenomenon because apparently 34 sites have been identified so far containing similar wishing trees across the British Isles. And yeah, I don't know what else to say about it other than I don't doubt that people actually have done this. I know for a fact, like there are coin, more recent coins from the last hundred years that people find. But when you just look at some of these trees, it just seems like maybe regards to some of the sites, maybe we're looking at something else, like a, a phenomenon that we don't quite know about. And uh, like I said, some of these older coins, again, they're bent or they appear filed down just like a lot of the uh, thieves coins and the love tokens and, and the time frames just a lot of commonalities amongst them. And this is just a different uh, site here. This one's in Scotland, and uh, this is just another one in, uh, in England here in the UK. So just really interesting phenomenon. A lot of them seem to be in the UK, so worth a mention. So I think that's about it. I just wanted to look at some of these artifacts, and I think, yeah, our history has been manipulated and I think some of what we're looking at here with regards to these artifacts is as a result of this unknown event. And when that exactly was, I'm still not sure, but looking into it, looking into it. So I think that's about all I have for you for today. I do want to give a big shout out to all my patrons. Really appreciate all the help and support. So I thank you very much. So until next time, take care. Bye.